This story can be explained by people who know about ghosts. I've lived long enough in India to know it's best just to tell things the way they happened. Dumois worked as our doctor at Mariki in the Punjab, in the northwest of India. He was a round, sleepy, little man, and he married a young woman as round and sleepy looking as himself. After their wedding, they forgot about the rest of the world and were very happy. Life in Maridki went on quite well without them. But Dumois was wrong to shut himself away from the world, as he discovered when there was an epidemic of typhoid in Maridki, and his wife became ill with the disease. Five days were lost before he realized she had more than just a fever. Three more days passed before he visited Mrs. Shute, the engineer's wife, and spoke to her in a nervous way about his trouble. She almost hit him round the ears. It's a crime you waited so long to tell someone, she said, and went off immediately to care for the poor woman. Seven people in Mariki caught typhoid that winter, and for 56 days, we fought the disease and brought them back to the world of the living. Just when we thought it was all finished, little Mrs. Dumois became worse again, and died in less than a week. Everyone went to the funeral. Dumois started crying at the edge of the grave, and was taken away by friends at once. After his wife's death, Dumois went back to their house alone. He didn't want help. He did his job well, but we all told him he should take a holiday. Dumois was grateful for the idea and went to the hills in northeast India on a walking tour. He took a gun and a big camera with him, hoping to take lots of photographs and forget his grief. A useless Indian servant went with him to help with his luggage. The man was lazy, and not very honest, but he'd been his wife's favorite, and most faithful servant, and Dumois was happy to let him manage everything. On his way back from the hills, Dumois went to a place called Baggy. The house where walkers can stay there is open to the winds, and a bitterly cold place. He stopped at seven o'clock in the evening, and his servant went down the hillside into the village to find carriers for the next day. The sun had gone down, and it was windy. Dumois stood in front of the house, waiting for the man to come back. He returned almost immediately, and so quickly that Dumois thought he'd probably met some wild animal on the way. He was running as hard as he could up the side of the hill. When he reached Dumois, he fell down at his feet. Blood came from his nose, and his face was gray with fear. Then he said, I've seen the Memsab. Where? asked Dumois. Down on the road to the village. She was in a blue dress, and she looked at me from under her hat and said, Ram Das, say hello to my husband, and tell him I'll meet him next month at Nadia. Then, I ran away because I felt very afraid. I don't know what Dumois did. Ram Das said he walked up and down in front of the house, and waited for the Memsaib to come up the hill holding out his arms in front of him like someone who was crazy. But, no Memsaib came, and the next day, Dumois traveled onwards to Simla, the summer home of the British government in northern India. He asked Ram Das endless questions about what had happened to him and Baggy along the way. Ram Das could only say he'd met Mrs. Dumois. She'd looked at him from under her hat, and had said the words he'd reported. 
He never changed his story. I don't know where Nadia is. I've never been to Nadia, and I don't want to go there. Even if I'm paid twice what I usually get to go, he added. Nadia is in Bengal, in southern India. It has nothing to do with a doctor working in the Punjab. It's more than 1,200 miles south of Maridki, where Dumois lived. Dumois passed through Simla without stopping, and then went on to Maridki. There he met the doctor. Who'd taken his place at the hospital while he was away? This man was an old friend of his, and they talked for a day about work. In the evening, Dumois told the man what had happened at Baggy. At that moment, the telegram boy ran in with a telegram from the government offices in Simla. Dumois read it with interest. It said, Cholera epidemic at Nadia. Bengal government needs help. Punjab government sending you there. Dumois threw the telegram on the table. Well, he cried. The other doctor said nothing. What could he say? Then he remembered Dumois had passed through Simla. Did you hear about this already? And take the job in order to make an end of your? He began, but Dumois stopped him. Not at all. It's the first I've heard of it. But if death comes for me, I won't be sorry. In the half light, the other man helped to put Dumois' things back in his bags. Ramdas came in with a light. Where's the Sahib going? He asked. To Nadia, answered Dumois softly. At that, Ramdas fell to the floor, pulling at Dumois' legs, and asking him not to go. He cried, and moaned until he was told to leave the room. Then he put all his things together and came to ask for a reference. I'm not going to Nadia to see the Sahib die, and perhaps die myself, he said. So Dumois paid him, gave him a reference, and went to Nadia alone. Eleven days later, he joined his memsub, and the Bengal government had to find a new doctor to fight the epidemic in Nadia. For Dumois lay dead from cholera in the hospital there. We hope you enjoy the story. Please subscribe for more videos.